Before you buy that new construction home in Las Vegas, make sure to check out this video because I'm going to be sharing eight things that I think you should think about before purchasing. Let's start at number one. Understanding the market in what you're purchasing your home in is very important. And it can also create many scenarios where you will have several questions but have nobody to turn to other than the builder's representative. Many buyers realize this too late into the process that when they do have questions and turn to the sales rep, they're actually there to represent the builder and not you. So their ability to help you is very limited compared to when you have your own representative, such as a buyer's agent, who's looking out for your best interest and also can possibly save you a ton of money in the long run. Here in Vegas, if you don't have your real estate professional accompany you on that very first visit to the community, they consider you unrepresented and they will not allow you to bring in representation moving forward. That even includes if you register online before visiting the sales office. The second process to purchasing a new construction home would be to find a lender. If you don't already have one that you work with, maybe from a past transaction, your real estate agent should be able to recommend a few lenders to you that will best fit your transaction. Once you do settle in with this lender, they can help you figure out what your budget is, how much of a home you can actually afford, and also how much cash you will need to bring to the closing table when that time comes. Now that you know what you can spend after talking with your lender, you'll have a better idea of which communities you can actually shop in that will fit your budget. Currently, Las Vegas has many options that offer all different price points from starter homes all the way up to pre-designed luxury homes. Some of the most popular communities in the Las Vegas area right now include Kestrel Canyon, Sky Canyon, Centennial Hills, Lake Las Vegas, and Ascension. Before we continue, my name is Lisa Lopez, a trusted real estate consultant in the Las Vegas area. I post videos weekly that share ways to make your luxury life simplified and exciting. For more videos like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified each time I drop a new video. So once you dial in the area of town you want to live in, now you can get a little more granular and decide which communities you'd like to live in. But even more in depth, you're going to want to start looking into the different builders that are currently building in those communities. I like to recommend to my buyers to start doing their research by not only going to the contractor's board website, but also checking out the Better Business Bureau. And now that social media and the internet is so big, really start looking into those reviews that past homeowners have posted. But it's important to keep in mind that while it's normal for builders to have some bad reviews, an overwhelming number of reviews talking about poor customer service on their warranty claims, major issues such as leaks and structural issues are not. And those should probably either be looked into further or maybe you would want to look into a different builder at that point. I've even gone as far as walking some of these neighborhoods to have conversations with the current homeowners to see what their perception is of the build process and how well the builder is receptive to their warranty claims. This kind of gives you an idea of how responsive the builder will be to you when you do have a warranty claim that will come up. So once you're out and about shopping for your new home, you're going to probably come across builders that have in-house lending. And a lot of times these lenders offer really good incentives. So don't worry if you've already connected with a lender and gotten a pre-approval. If one of these lenders or builders does have a lender that has better um, incentives, don't 
think that your lender is going to feel offended if you do choose to change over to the in-house lender because for the most part, those outside lenders understand that there are some pretty good deals to be had out there and they understand that saving money is really worth it, especially with the higher interest rates we're experiencing right now. The downside to these in-house lenders is that they generally only have conventional lending and can't do much with creative financing. So if you are one of those people who maybe are an entrepreneur or just started a new job, or have some creative way of making money, these in-house lenders probably won't be your best bet and you'll probably have to stick with your original plan on your outside lender. So let's talk a little bit about price, customization, and upgrades. So for the most part, when you're driving by a new construction community and you see a price on the sign, it's important to know that that price you see is generally the starting price of the least expensive home in that community. And it's the base price, not including your lot premium or any other structural or design upgrades that you're going to choose later down the road. Once you choose the floor plan and model, you're going to go under contract with, you're also going to have to choose your lot. So when it comes time to write the contract with the builder, you're going to be expected to generally pay a portion of that lot premium, depending on how much the lot premium is. I've seen them go from $5,000 all the way upwards of $500,000. So a lot of builders require that you put down some of that money up front. You will also be choosing your structural upgrades. And most builders want a 10% deposit on top of your normal earnest money for that portion of the contract. When you are at that signing appointment, the builder's representative is going to then set a second appointment for you about two weeks out to visit the design center, where you're going to be able to choose options such as flooring, your countertops, backsplash options, bathroom surrounds, and maybe your appliance upgrades. You'll also be able to choose here some luxury item upgrades such as wine rooms and chef's kitchens. I get a lot of questions about how much someone should budget for these design center upgrades. And the rule of thumb here is 20% above the base price of the home. Some builders require that you pay 50% of your design center options up front at the time of your design center appointment. Others allow you the space to do the 20% and will only charge you 50% of the amount that you go above the 20% above base price. Again here, it's also important to remember that new construction homes come with appliances, but not all of your appliances. They come with your stove, your cooktop, a microwave, maybe a wall oven, and also your dishwasher. But remember, your home will not come with a refrigerator or a washer and dryer. So those will have to be purchased after close of escrow and you should budget appropriately. You also will have to purchase window coverings and new construction homes do not come with a landscaped backyard. And generally these HOAs that are present in these new construction communities require that your backyard landscape be installed within six to 12 months of close of escrow. So keep that in mind as well. So now that you have selected all of these options, your job is to sit and watch your home come to fruition. Now the builder is going to start building your home, but there are a couple walkthroughs and inspections that they require. And the first one will be your frame walk, or sometimes it's referred to as your dusty shoe walk. So you will be walking through and seeing and making sure that all of your electrical upgrades and options have been installed and 
as well as your plumbing. And if there's anything that has been forgotten, it's time to speak up here to make sure that the builder corrects that before closing up all your walls. This is also where you're going to want to be sure any of your structural upgrades have also been built into the home properly. These things could include floating staircases, next-gen suites, or additional bedrooms instead of lofts and things like that. Although th at this point in time, a builder will highly recommend that you do not bring in a third party inspector. But this is where having your own representation is very important because I highly recommend that you do have a third party inspector come in at this time. I've had third party inspectors find mistakes in electrical wiring, they have found mistakes in plumbing, and they've also found squeaky floorboards. And at least at this point in time when they're found out, your builder can correct these items before all the walls and the floor final flooring stuff goes in which makes it a lot harder to correct after the fact and usually won't be found out until after you've moved in which creates a nightmare for you as a resident now another benefit to having the third party inspector at this time is that homeowners are so excited to see their home being completed so through all this excitement they tend to overlook some things that a third party inspector who is not emotionally involved in the process will catch. So that is just another added benefit to having that third party inspector. And they're rather inexpensive, especially for the price that you're paying for your home. So once you approve and pass that frame inspection of your home, you will again need to sit and wait and watch the magic happen. This can seem like it's taking forever, but it is definitely worth it. And going out weekly is really fun and exciting to watch your home be built. Most builders will set another date to do an orientation and walkthrough about seven to 10 days before the projected date of completion of your home. At this point, your home will be about 99% complete and you will walk through the property with usually the superintendent and your customer service representative from the builder. Here again, I like to recommend to my clients to hire that same third party inspector to come out and check everything over with their eyes. The builder will again tell you it's not necessary and that their superintendent has made sure that all their I's have been dotted and their T's crossed, but they are working for the builder. So it's again a good idea to get someone who's not emotionally involved or financially attached to the completion of your home to walk through it and ensure that everything is up to par. At this this point that third party inspector will go through your house with a fine tooth comb they will test every electrical outlet they will make sure all plumbing fixtures are running properly they will run all of your appliances to make sure those are running properly and they will make sure all of the structural items such as doors windows roofing flashing and HVAC units are all operating as well. So once you finish compiling that list with your inspector and your agent, the builder will go back and fix all of those issues while you are setting your appointment with the title company to sign all loan and purchase documents. Then you will have one last walkthrough usually on the date that you will be receiving your keys to make sure that all of those items have been completed. And if everything is all tidy at the title company, then you will receive your keys later on that afternoon. I'm covering a lot of important things. So tell me in the comments below, how many times do I recommend you have a third party inspector come out throughout the build process of a new construction home? Is it A, two, B, four, C, none, or D, 
five. Don't forget, let me know in the comments below. Some additional things to remember when buying a new construction home here in Las Vegas is that a lot of our communities, almost all of them now, have HOA fees. So it's important to know how much those are and how frequently they get paid. Some of them even have more than one. And we also have SIDS and LIDS and property taxes to pay. If you're purchasing your home as your residence, there's a form that you can actually fill out with our tax department that will cap your tax rate at 3%. But if you forget to fill out that form, or if this home is an investment home, then you can expect to pay 7% of 35% of the assessed value of your home. HOA dues normally cover landscaping in the common areas. They also cover any gate maintenance, roving security, tennis courts and clubhouses if that is applicable to your neighborhood. SIDS and LIDS are assessments that builders will pass on to the buyer that they had to pay in advance to cover the cost of building the infrastructure and also bringing in the utilities that they needed to complete the neighborhoods that, that, that you're buying in. For more videos about Las Vegas and Henderson, make sure to check out my playlist and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified each time I drop a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.